Hello everyone and welcome to a Raise Aerospace Rendezvous and Docking Tutorial in Kerbal Space Program 2. We are going to do a simple rendezvous, but a general purpose docking here. The simple rendezvous is the case where you have launched something into low carbon orbit directly out of the space center at a 90 degree heading, so that it's equatorial. A uh, more general sort of rendezvous would be if it's in any inclination, or even if it's far flung and coming in from an escape trajectory or something like that. Those are very specific situations that we'll have to cover separately. But for now, this is like if you're constructing a space station in orbit or putting together an interplanetary craft in orbit, we would want uh, this kind of rendezvous. And so we'll do that, but the general purpose docking is where you cannot control the target, you're not going to maneuver the target, you're just going to have to figure out how to dock with it without changing its orientation. And so that's a general purpose docking. And the easier docking would be is if you could line both of them up and point them at each other and then dock. And I'll just make note of that once we get to the docking phase. But the general principle here is that if the target is high enough, and we have a target here called Kajina 1, and it is in a 119 by 121 kilometer orbit, that's high enough that we will want to catch up with it. And you catch up with it by going into a lower orbit. Lower orbits are faster, higher orbits are slower. So we'll launch into a lower orbit than the roughly 120 kilometer orbit in order to catch up, and we want the target ahead of us. However, by the time we get through launch, it's already going to be ahead of us. So we don't have to worry about that. It is possible to intercept the target directly uh, in the process of launch and make sure that you meet up with it without waiting, but we're not gonna cover that this time. We're gonna keep it simple. If the target is in too low an orbit, if it's around 80 kilometers, which is really close to the atmosphere, you will want to get into a higher orbit and make sure that the target is further back so that the target can catch up to you uh, because it'll be going faster in a lower orbit. So if it's at 80 kilometers, you can get into the 120 kilometer orbit, let it catch up to you, and we'll show you how that works, and then that'll be easier. Otherwise, you're going to have to do extra orbital maneuvers. So, we're going to launch another Kajina and meet up with this. I've made our docking target and docking vehicle painfully simple. We have a docking port here, a controller, a battery, a mod propellant tank, a main propellant tank so that we can deorbit it, and RCS thrusters directly above the center of mass. And so we have four of these four-way RCS blocks and that will keep things simple. There are many other RCS configurations that you can use, but this is probably the most straightforward one if we're intending to dock. And we have a spark engine at the bottom, and that's for further orbital maneuvers. Uh, this is the sort of thing that you could use to push other objects around if necessary, maybe a slowly move a station to a higher orbit kind of thing. So other than that, we have a terrier and swivel engine rocket, and it should work out just fine for us. In fact, I've already launched another one, so. Let's take a look at where our target is right now. Uh, it's a lot closer, uh, Kajina 1-4 there. Okay, uh, perhaps we can target it, set target. All right, but right now we're not concerned about that. We are going to ignite, uh, skip downtown, and launch. So we want to get into a lower orbit, we will say 80 kilometers. You can get into an orbit where it's 80 kilometers at one side and 120 kilometers on the other side since the target is at 120. That is an option. We see the target marker there. That is the white marker on the nav ball at the moment. But we shouldn't be distracted by it right now. It is going to go in front of us. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, disposing of the terrier stage. So you can see here, we're not too far behind the target. And in fact, I might burn directly into a 120 kilometer approach there. So right now, we haven't made orbit yet. We're igniting to finish orbit here. Uh, though apparently we didn't stage. There we go. So in this simple situation, we don't have much inclination difference. I went too far. I'll just correct with RCS. 
You can tell you've gone too far if you have two intercept points. It says I1, I2. You want just one. That'll keep things simpler. So we have an intercept point there. It says 25 kilometers away from the target. So let's see where that gets us. We should be catching up. But the low inclination situation, you can see it's a 0.8 degree inclination difference, is the easy situation that we are going with this time. And as we pass this intercept point, it shows us that now our situation has changed. It's going to be 163 kilometers away. It's gone on the opposite side. So what we want to do is at apoapsis, boost our periapsis because it's clearly, we're clearly catching up too much and we're going right past it. So uh, with us pointing prograde, nothing else, we're going to boost up here and we will see now there's two uh, indicated intercept points and we want to be, oops, I'll use RCS to correct that. We want to be within two kilometers, ideally. If you can't get within two kilometers, and this side is way off anyway, uh, we should correct the tiny little bit of inclination difference that we have. Now we can do that over here. You can sort of see that 0.8 degree difference that we have here. You can create a maneuver point there and try to correct that difference. It says that it's ascending node, so on this maneuver we're going to pull down, so we will descend. And that will decrease the difference. And note that it's also bringing the intercept points together. It doesn't quite get there, but now that's just 671 meters. It's an extra burn, and it's possible to do the intercept. You might have noticed that the intercept 2 was very close to the ascending node initially. And so you can probably save yourself this little bit of trouble just making sure that you meet up with the target at the ascending or descending node. So right now where that is or close to the opposite point. But just correcting the inclination, it says here it costs 31 meters per second. It doesn't seem too difficult. So I will just do that. Also, you don't have to do it anyway because we were about three kilometers off and that's not that far apart. You could probably manage it if uh, manage what we're going to do next, not correcting this and still being three kilometers apart. And we'll just ignite now. I think there's some weirdness about the maneuver timer. Okay, that should be enough. And if we take a look at intercept one, 280 meters even. And our relative velocity is 11 meters per second. So that's what we're expecting to need to deal with once we arrive. You want that, you want to make sure that the relative speed is not too high. So as we get close, we want this to point at the target. And so SAS control target. And this is mainly just to see where it is and get our bearings. So there it is, and we're getting close. So I'm going to go anti-target, but the anti-target marker isn't the anti-target velocity marker. The anti-target velocity marker is that one, the green one. So we are going to just use SAS and what we need to do is push the anti-target velocity marker, right? You have to click this thing, make sure that's on target, and you're going to go on the opposite side of the white target marker, this one, go on the opposite side of that, from this green retro target marker. It's complicated, I know. But then we gotta push it towards, push them together and then shut down. Now they're together, which means that we're going directly to the target. See, that means that our velocity vector is in the direction of the target. Now it's dark now. I don't really want to dock in the dark. It's not gonna help you or me. Uh, so we're going to turn on the RCS and we're going to cut our velocity. And you can see our velocity going down here with respect to the target. And we'll sort of park for now. And the velocity vector is going all over the place because of that. Okay. So once again, let's try that 
process again. We're going to point at the target. So we see it's there, about a kilometer away. And we're going to go to SAS control. And we're going to go on the opposite side of the velocity marker. You can see it's wobbling right there. And I'll just use RCS to do it this time. So we're going to gently push the velocity. Actually, that's the towards target marker. So we're going away from the target right now. You can see our distance is increasing. So once we've pushed the velocity marker there, uh, we can just point at the target. I'll turn off RCS, point at the target. Turn on RCS. I don't want to keep RCS on when uh, SAS is turning us because SAS uses a lot of RCS. And then I just push myself to the target. So we really want this marker to be on the target marker and the retro target marker, that one, retrograde marker, while we're in target mode, to be on the anti-target marker. Now, let's say you're like this and you don't want to tilt. I mean, you know, we're pointing at the target. It's very nice to point at the target and we don't want to tilt our craft all over the place. What we can do is, in order to pull the velocity vector up, we can press K, like this, and in order to push it to the right, we can push L. This should only be done if you're slow, if you're very slowed down with respect to the target, and you're less than 5 meters per second. Otherwise, uh, especially if you have an imbalanced RCS arrangement, it'll cause a lot of wiggling and you know, you're probably going to be very frustrated with it. But right now we're going towards the target directly 3.3 meters per second. We'll make further corrections as we need to dock. Now we're not going to try and control the other vehicle, but if we could get them pointed directly at each other, that would make docking easier. We would just adjust the velocities just like I did before and we would so now it's turning towards the target. We would just turn towards the target. Now we need to use K to pull the velocity vector up. We could just pull it up and point to the target, have the other side point at us, and then we would meet up and we would be able to dock. But we're going to do the situation where we can't do that. Now you see the RCS doing a whole lot of stuff and as we get closer, we don't want it to do as much. So I'm going to thrust limit them. I've, I don't know if caps lock works for fine controls, that was how we used to do it before, but this is fine too, uh, it seems to symmetrize. Less is more when it comes to docking, and patience will save you a lot of fuel. And every so often we'll have to correct because we uh, orbits deviate, and so here I am getting us back on. And if you don't have much velocity, like we had less than one meter per second, you can push H in order to push yourself towards the target again. Now we see the docking port is up here. Oops. And we're going to slow down. Oh, the target is tumbling. Okay. That's not helpful. Okay, just SAS control please. Now the target tumbling is not a situation where we can dock. Um, it seems to be quite out of control. I'm going to let it pick a random orientation to stop at. Okay, it has decided to be in this orientation. It started... It started turning again. I don't know if I can demonstrate docking like this. Okay, we're going to go to the tracking station and come back and see if that all stops. But it clearly has some phantom forces and things are going on even here. Yeah, this thing's orbit is constantly changing, even if I disable RCS and SAS. Look, there's nothing that should be changing its orbit. But its orbit is constantly changing by more than a kilometer. And yeah, it's got a f uh, somebody had mentioned a phantom torque, and we have that. Now, this is about as simple a vessel as you can make in the game, but this definitely has a phantom torque to it. Uh, let me see if uh, disabling the reaction wheel will help. Um, torque enabled, off. No, it seems to be going worse immediately. 
I'm going to save the game and then I'm going to quit and restart and see if it continues to be a problem. So, Kajina docking. Okay, loading the save now. What state will it be in? It... Well, it says not enough resources there. Lost control. But it seems like we have control. Do we have a target? We, we have a target. So, well, let's try the rendezvous and docking tutorial again. So restarting may have worked. Uh, we see the velocity vector over here, so I'm pressing J to move it to the left. And pressing I to push it down. And now we're lined up again. Now we don't know the orientation of the target right now. Or no, this wasn't the one that was spinning around. This was the one that was spinning around, but it's okay now. It's okay now, right? Okay, uh, so we can try this. Okay, at around 200 meters, I look to slow down here. And uh, the icon is really obscuring the target's orientation. I prefer the old box in KSP-1 because then you could see how the target was oriented. Now this icon is covering it, so that's not good. They should change that very much so. Now it's gone, and we can see we're coming alongside, it would appear. But I need to get closer to see exactly what's going on. Okay, it looks like the docking port's on top. I am going to slow down, pressing N. And also pressing L to move the velocity vector back towards the target here, and then pressing N. Okay, now we're parked. So, the first thing we would do is turn off RCS and then turn ourselves so that we're parallel as if we're facing the docking port. So you can sort of see... Okay, for, well, we don't want it to point at target. <laughs> Regular SAS mode, no RCS, orienting as if we were already docked, basically. Vaguely like that would be okay. All right, then RCS back on, back off. Oh, now it's in the dark. I should have put lights on these. The Gina had lights. But okay, in principle, let's say that we're parallel right now. What we want to do is the if it's a negative velocity vector, you know the one with the cross, the retrograde vector, we want to push that on the opposite side from the target. If it's the positive velocity vector, the prograde one, while we're in target mode, make sure you're in target mode, we want to put that on the this side of the target. So, so the retrograde one on the opposite, opposite side of us from the target, or the prograde one will be on the opposite side of the target from us. And that will let us line up with the target. You can see the target marker is moving towards us right now. And I'll push L, oh, sorry, uh, J to keep it on the opposite side, you see. And then eventually, if you're sufficiently lined up, you can decide that we should be, go be going towards the target. We're going away right now at 0.5 meters per second. So going towards the target is H. And now the prograde vector is over there, exactly where it was supposed to be, because we had already put the retrograde vector in the right place. And we can approach it faster than this. So just a little bit further, yeah, like that. As the target vector comes in, we'll pull the prograde vector towards our own vector so we're lined up and we're using I, J, K, and L for that. And then we can sort of see the docking port there. We should be close enough. I'm going to slow down to 0.5. And then do further adjustments the same way. And slow down a bit, and dock. Well, that was a lot more trouble than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so, the essence is that you put your prograde vector on the opposite side of the target from your uh, little crosshair, or if you're going away from the target, put the retrograde marker on the opposite side of you 
from the target. And you can see that the nav ball is everything here. And then you need to make sure that you manage your speed properly. And then you can dock. Well, we have struggled through this mightily. But I will do it once again. Because we did it in nighttime there, and that's no good. I just saw a little jerk there, that doesn't make me happy. Okay, undock. Okay. Now, we're going to move this one so that it's in a weird position. Okay, so we'll be like this. And we'll have it hold it. And first step. We are going to turn as if we're facing the docking port. Oh, this is also uh, SAS-less. So pretend that you're already docked. This is how it would be oriented, right? Sort of. You could sort of try to visualize it. If you have trouble visualizing it here, you can use the RCS to back off first and then try and approach it. And we can just take a look at the directions that the RCS fire in. So this is these are firing this way, so it's pushing us that way. This is if you have trouble orienting properly. So having lined up one axis with J and L, we can line up the other axis with I and K. So taking a look at the thrusters, you can see that I pushes us towards the target. And then maybe a far view like this will help. We're not quite parallel with it. And then we're drifting away. So I'll put a little bit of H to move forward. Okay, and K to stop moving in the direction we have been. And we aren't even in target right now. Didn't even have it targeted. Combined. It says combined here. So apparently I can't actually set that as my target. So we have an extraordinarily difficult do docking situation. But alright. This time I'll, I'll try and parallelize right now. So we're docking in the blind here. That means that we don't have a target symbol on the nav ball. But at least we can see the target, that we're not blind in that respect. And line up one axis at a time. So a little I, K, and up, 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 hold on there. Well, we seem to be drifting. And there we go. So even without the nav ball's help, that's not ideal though. Uh, try and do it the way with the nav ball that I showed in the first place in the dark. But as long as you can isolate one axis and then another axis and note whether J and L are helping you in one axis or I and K are helping you in that axis, then you can probably manage it. Roll if necessary to make sure that J and L are specifically one axis and I and K are specifically the other axis. Uh, but you don't have to worry about that if you can uh, set the target and use the nav ball in order to just go with the retrograde marker, retrograde target marker, or prograde target marker. But because I couldn't set it as my target because it had this weird combined thing here, so now it's combined 12, it used to be combined 10, uh, then I was forced to, since I couldn't set it as a target, uh, do it this way visually. So anyway, we managed it. I am going to deorbit these guys now. So as these get disposed of, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will see you next time.